Um, Tachapam Saranora will be speaking on dynamics, bearing forest, and worst case update time. And for the one half, minus epsilon. Thank you. So, my name is Tachapon Saranurak, uh, and this is joint work with Danupon Nanongkai. And uh, today I will talk about dynamic spanning forest. And uh, just to remind everyone, uh, spanning tree is just any tree that includes all the nodes. And spanning forest is just a set of spanning tree on each connected component. And the problem here is to maintain a spanning forest in the graph under changes. And usually I just say spanning tree or spanning forest interchangeably in this talk. So let's see the example. Suppose you have a graph, okay? And you want a data structure such that once there is some update in the graph G, you did some edge, one, three, like this. And you want to update your, your tree, like, like this. And you, output, you just output the, the, the change in your tree or forest, okay? And then the next update come, it can, you can insert something. If, if there's no change, you output nothing. And the next update comes, uh, you delete two, four, and you update the tree, and you output the change, okay? So this is a setting. And um, basically, you want a data structure that maintain the graph and is spanning forest. Under the, uh, this update operation, you can insert or delete any, any edge, and you output the change in the forest. And the goal is to minimize the update time, which is the worst case time to output the change in your forest. And uh, it has many applications in, in, uh, in some static algorithm and some dynamic data structures that I will not go into this, but there are many applications. And, but let's see the progress on, on this important um, problem. So, there is a naive way to, to deal with this. Basically, you, you, you just recompute everything uh, after every update in time linear. But this is not what we want. Uh, there is a, the, non the first non-trivial algorithm is by Frederickson um, from 83. He has square root m update time, and then f star at all improve it into square root n. And this bound stands for a long time. But uh, people can improve it for some, uh, actually. So there is a beautiful line of research that make it uh, polyno polylog update time if the update time is amortized. That is, uh, it is an average update time throughout the sequence of update. But basically, some update can, can take long time, linear time, but on, uh, on average, is fast. And also, um, uh, Capron, King, and Mount join um, have some break too, uh, and and here they, they get worst case polylog time, but uh, when the oblivious when the adversary uh, is oblivious, so basically it just means that all the update is fixed in the beginning. So so you don't need to know exactly um, um, why it's bad, but uh, it's just that uh, for some application we we need non oblivious adversary. Okay, so that's why people come back to, to, the, to the question when um, you want worst case, not amortized, and um, it, you want to, uh, the algorithm to work against non-oblivious adversary, okay? And people can improve it. Um, this is by uh, Kajberg, uh, Rasmussen, uh, et al. Um, and they, they improve this to, to something less than uh, square root n. And the question is that can we improve it further by polynomial factor, even using randomization, okay? And this is what we do. We improve it to n to the pi four using randomization. Uh, so worst case time, again, adaptive adversary. And, um, and also I just want to mention in the next talk, uh, Christian Wolfnerson also have the, a similar kind of improvement but for the harder problem, he will talk about it. Okay, so this is our result. So let's see the high level idea. So the idea is to use many techniques. Uh, we, uh, we combine many classic techniques in, in dynamic data, in the field of dynamic graph algorithm. Here is the list, and also combine with some modern technique, 
like sparse recovery, which is initially used by uh, Varelli. And then, um, but what I want to highlight is that uh, there is a, the new thing that is uh, we use expander uh, versus almost three paradigm. And this is something that is used successfully for static algorithm before. Um, for example, like Lapishian solver and max, uh, fast max flow. But uh, this, so we use this in dynamic setting, okay. And within this paradigm, we also need to use some, some uh, cool technique that is, that is used before in static setting, but we, then we apply in, in the dynamic case. So let's see exactly what, what is this paradigm. So um, basically, we, we need to solve two extreme cases. First, when the graph is expander, basically the graph is well connected. And the next case is when the graph is almost tree. So you should think of this as the graph is just a tree plus few edges. So for example, this is a tree and four edges uh, additionally. Okay. And once you solve these two extreme cases, there is a way to combine two extreme cases and then you solve the general one, the general problem that you want to solve. And the, the, two, the two tools that we use is something called uh, decomposition and pruning, and we talk about it. But uh, on each of these box, we, we need some, many techniques. Uh, some is classic, some is new. Some is quite modern in, in this field. Okay. So, so now I will go into some more detail. I will tell some interesting idea, and I will omit uh, some small factor. So. Let's see, uh, in this talk, I will say that the graph is expander if in any cut of the graph, the number of edge across the cut over the, the, the small side of the cut is at least this number, uh, one over n to the epsilon, where epsilon is, is small constant. Basically, the, if you know, um, I mean, the, the expansion of the cut is, is at least this number. And I will say that the graph is almost three if Basically, it's a three plus plus few edges. So, so the connected graph is almost is almost three if the number of edge is uh, n minus one plus something sublinear. Okay, so you should think of it like this. So this is expander. This is almost three. So now let's see. Uh, in the first, now we go how how do how do we do in this first box? Okay, so we have a graph, which is expander, and we have a spanning tree. And the only interesting case I want to, that I want to say is when, when, the, when you delete some tree edge. So for example, example you, you delete this, this edge, which, is, which was three edge before. And, um, and you see, once you delete this, the tree is break apart into two parts, S and T. And uh, what, you, what we want is to find any edge across S. If you can find it, then you can reconnect the two part together, and then you get a new spanning tree. So what do we do? The algorithm is quite simple. Uh, what we do is that we just need to sample few edges with end point in S. Some edge can, can be completely inside S, but uh, and some edge is a some, some edge is an edge across S. This is what we want, but uh, we just but we just sample and some edge with endpoint in S. Basically, can be inside or crossing. We can do this fast by the known data structure, but the nice thing is that because this is ex expander, so because of this, the number of edges across the cut is is proportionally large compared to the edge inside. That's why with, within few, well, after you assemble few edges here, you will get the edge across, across S, okay? And that's why this, is, this has become easy. You can do it fast here. Just want to say that uh, this approach does, doesn't work in, for minimum spanning forest. This is a key difference from, from our work to, to Christian work that in the next talk. And the next case, here, when the graph is almost three. Okay. 
In this case, I won't go much into details, but I just want to say that there is a classic technique called uh, two-dimensional topology tree by Federickson. And this technique can be sped up in almost three with some modification. Um, so it's simple once you understand the technique. And you get something faster than, than square root n. So we will, we will not worry about this case from now. And now this is the most interesting part. How do you combine the two cases? So you, have, you know how to do this in, when the graph is expander and another case. Now we try to combine the case. So, so the first thing is that you know that your, your input graph may not be expanded in the beginning. So what do we do is this. Input, you have any graph, you have input which is a graph, and we will use this algorithm to decompose the graph into cluster. Basically, the output is uh, the partition of nodes, okay? And, and we have that on each part, the induce, the induce subgraph is expander, okay? And simultaneously, the, the number of edges across cluster, there are not too many, just sublinear. So this decomposition is known and used before in, in the approximation community, and, but it's, it's not near linear yet. What we want is something near linear, so, so we, we improve the running time here also. So now we have this decomposition. Inside here is expander and not too many edges crossing a cluster. So what we can do now is that we can main, we, because we know how, how uh, sorry, what we will do is this. We will maintain a spanning tree inside each expander. Like this, inside each ex expander you get a spanning tree. And how, how do we do it? We do it because we know how to do it in, in expander. Okay, so we, we get it here. And once you can manage everything inside expander, so suppose now you f just forget Edge inside expander, the blue one. What you get is now almost three. Why? Because there are not too many edge across the cluster, and inside here, this is just a three. Okay, so this is almost three, and what we want to do now is to maintain a spanning tree in this almost three. And we do also know how to do this because there is another case that, that we that that we know before. So, so now, after this, in this graph, we get a spanning tree in this graph. So the thick edge are three edges. Okay. And uh, so you can see that this, this thick edges form a spanning tree in, the, in your original graph. You can see something like this. Okay. So this is like the high level overview, but are we done yet? It's not exactly that we are done because if you look into your graph in the beginning, this is expander, but once there are some edge deletion in, into expander, the expander is not expander anymore, okay? So this is exactly where we need a new tool. Uh, we want to prune some, something out from the expander. We want to repair the expander, okay? So, so let me explain what is the, this, this tool. So suppose you have a graph which, which is expander in the beginning, and then you delete some edge in the graph. You get G prime. And once you zoom in, this, this part is like you delete something and it breaks apart, and this is why it, G prime is not expander anymore. And then the algorithm will do this. It read G and the deleted edge D, and it output P, the set up node, such that the complement of P is still expander. So basically, the you, you read a graph and output P such that when you prune, prune P off from the graph, the remaining part is expander. This is what you want. And I just want to say what, what is cool about this, this um, algorithm is that it doesn't even read the whole graph. The time that is spent on this 
it's just proportional to the size of P actually. And P will be small. So, so you can see here that uh, suppose you delete some edge in, in, in the expander, you basically you prune some small part from the expander out, and the remaining part is, is expander, and you can deal with that. And the part that you prune off is small, so it will be no problem. So this is the high level idea of the algorithm. So I just want to say that the, the cool, the cool uh, new technique is, is to use decomposition and pruning that I think might be of interest, uh, independent in, in, interest. So this is a high level overview. So let me conclude. So what is nice about this problem is that uh, you, you, you have uh, a very simple problem, a spanning tree problem, spanning forest is very simple in static case. But once you look into dynamic setting, it bring together many, many uh, techniques from different fields. So that's what I like about this. And what we have is that we improve the, the bound polynomially, uh, which stand for quite a long time. And actually, together with uh, Danupon and uh, Wolf and Christian, using our technique and Christian technique, uh, and then together with some uh, new new idea, we can break the, this bound into n to the little o of one, even for minimum spanning tree problem. So, uh, so some open problem. Uh, deterministic algorithm would be very interesting, okay? And uh, I think that we, there would be more application of, of this paradigm, maybe in the cut-related problem like mean cut, sparses cut, or low stress spanning tree. So that concludes my talk. Thank you. Oh, so we need to we need to uh, restart many time. We the algorithm actually run in phases, and then once the 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 the, the, the partition uh, is broken, then for for some time we restart again. That's that's how we deal with it.